You're watching the ACC on ESPN in front of what could be a record crowd for a women's game at the Carrier Dome tonight. We're getting set. Adam Amin, Kara Lawson, LaChina Robinson is with us as well. Let's give a couple of breakdowns before we dive into the game. First things first, Notre Dame still battling for an ACC championship. Syracuse battling for a double bye in the ACC tournament. And after all that, Notre Dame sitting at the one line in Charlie Cream's bracketology, and Syracuse at a five seed. Syracuse could bolster its resume with a win tonight as well. There's still a lot to play for, as you said, Adam, for both teams. I think what's really important as we look at Notre Dame, and there's a lot of boxes that they can still check, an ACC regular season championship, an ACC tournament championship, and then that number one seed in coveted Chicago for them in that region. Right. But to me, what's most important for teams as we head down the stretch is, are you playing your best basketball? And do you have belief and confidence that, you're, that you can win the whole thing? And I don't know that there's a player or a team that I would want coming down the stretch than Notre Dame and Enrique Agumawale right. because of the experience and because of what she's been able to do throughout her career in pressure situations. This is a Syracuse team that's helmed by Quentin Hill, uh, Hillsman. Went to the Final Four in 2016 and really has built a culture and identity, LaChina. He's looking for that crucial win against Notre Dame. He's never had that before tonight. Yeah, much of the success that Quentin Hillsman has had at Syracuse has been rooted in their unique playing style. They call it the 20-plus rule, and the goal is to create 20 extra shots per game. Well, how do they want to do that? Plus 10 on the turnover margin plus 10 on offensive rebounds, and also maximizing the value of the three-point field goal. We'll be keeping an eye on these stats tonight, guys, and of course, we'll see a lot of 2-3 zone on the defensive end from the Orange. Yeah, something to contend against for this Notre Dame bunch tonight. A look at the Hall of Famer Muffin McGraw, the head coach of the defending national champion Fighting Irish, lone meeting of the season against the Syracuse Orange. There is the aforementioned Arike Ogumbawale, who has now become the all-time leading scorer in Notre Dame history after her 25-point performance against Duke. Brianna Turner wins the tip, and off we go from the Carrier Dome. Could we see upwards of around 12,000 tonight after the men brought in 35,000 for Duke the other night? And quickly, Brianna Turner is going to go to the free throw line after a Syracuse foul. We'll go against Miranda Drummond. Pace is going to be something to keep an eye on tonight. Both teams are in the top 40 in the country in pace. Quinton Hillsman wants to pressure. This could be a very interesting game, maybe after the five or six minute mark when these coaches settle in. Well, there's always a, in a big game, in a game that, that has so many postseason ramifications, there's always a feeling out process when yep. you have talented teams as Notre Dame and Syracuse. And, and so you feel each other out, you kind of get a rhythm for the game, and then you try and, and expose the other team's weaknesses as best you can. And that's a nice job of finding the middle of the zone by Cuse to start. That is Digna Stratmane and the assist to Tiana Monica Hia, because we're going to say that name a lot tonight. She's the leader in assists in college basketball, as all three for the Irish belong to Turner. Number four in white, Monica Hia leads the NCAA in assists per game, led the country in assists last year, this after a stint at junior college. Well, two very productive years for Syracuse, but a steal out high. And Ogumbo Wale. Mabry to follow it up. And Marina Mabry puts Notre Dame in front by three. So passes across the board for Syracuse. Very important with those wings for Notre Dame, whether it's Mabry or Young or Ogumbo Wale. They, they, they take chances. They're courageous at the top of that zone. They'll look to get their, their hand on the basketball. You have to be sharp. Drummond got shut off by Turner. There's Gabby Cooper, a deep three, and the first one of the night for the Cubes. They average 10 per game, leading the ACC and top 10 of the country, as the China talked about. Jess Shepard has become a force this season. Well defended. Cooper nearly lost it. Last touch by Mabry. Solid start, both ways. Yep. All right, good pace. Opportunities looking to attack and transition. Played two minutes. 
Notre Dame in transition, something they do very well. We've seen a Syracuse three, and we've seen their zone. The identity on display for both clubs early. Monacahia, and a three-second violation against Finkley. Thirty-fifth meeting all time, going back to 1988. Muffin McGraw's first season was the first time that Notre Dame lost to Syracuse. She's only lost one other time since that second ever meeting in 1988. Ogumawale, a deep three. Yeah, that's something that Muffin McGraw talked about to us at shoot around. They're going to have to make some threes. Just be, you can't allow Syracuse to sit in that zone. That ball has to sing past those defenders in the rotation out of the zone. And Enrique is ready to shoot. That's one of the things he talked about. Be shot ready on that weak side. Notre Dame averages about four three-point makes per game. Now, they've got very efficient shooters, but they're not a volume three-point shooting team. I think that's a misconception for a lot of people about Notre Dame. They're assuming they're just chucking it up constantly. Finkley's going to go to the free throw line for two. That foul goes against Jackie Young. They play through their forwards quite a bit. I mean, they'll play through Jess Shepard. They'll play through Jackie Young. Um, they, they've had different players lead them in assists all season long. Marina Mabry coming off one of her best games of the year with the 10 assists. Arike has improved in the passing area. Yep. So it, it's it's hard to lock in in one area what they, what they do best. Well, tonight we were talking with Holly Rowe, and she was building this one up as one of the biggest games in the rivalry's history. Kansas State and Kansas. Holly's on the call with Bob Wischusen and Fran Priscilla in a couple of hours over on ESPN and the ESPN app. Kansas trying to keep that regular season championship streak alive. On the ensuing action, Kiera Lewis in off the bench commits the foul. Brianna Turner with another shot block, the leader in the ACC this year. She's got 77 shot blocks now. Turner's second all-time in Notre Dame history in shot blocks. Here's Shepard. Yeah, that's, I mean, the last two Notre Dame possessions, those are two areas I think are really important for them. Making a few threes, mm -hmm. and then the middle of that zone, and getting the ball to Shepard, and her making that jump shot in that area, I think bodes well for her confidence as the game goes along. Drummond, their second leading scorer, right behind Manakahia. Launches that three. Offensive rebound, Finkley. Drummond cutting inside. Binkley on the second chance is blocked by Turner and out of bounds staying with the orange. Well, this is what Turner does. She gives Notre Dame's back line of defense the element of rim protection. I mean, one on one, she has the ability to, to block shots. Weak side coming over, helping out her teammates. I think it's the best part of Notre Dame's defense is Turner. Something they missed a year ago when she was out with the ACL injury. Good take inside by Finkley, her first bucket. <laughs> Maybe thought about, thought about that deep <laughs> one, didn't she? Jackie Young instead will take it. Rebounded by Stroutman. Mabry is 10 three-point make shy of tying the all-time ND record. Drummond turns it over to Ogumbawale. Something that Quinton Hillsman was very worried about, turning it over to give Notre Dame transition chances. Here's Finkley, quick catch and shoot. Drummond got the offensive rebound and will quickly trigger a three. The continuous movement by Drummond on that possession was a difference maker. Getting the offensive rebound and then having the confidence to get it out quickly, realizing that the defender was not close enough and pulling it from beyond the arc. Really love, good hustle. Yeah, I love the confidence. Mabry fires and sinks it to answer. 253 three-pointers. Alicia Retai has the record at 262. Another Syracuse turnover. Mabry, transition triple. And Syracuse escapes there. Four early Syracuse turnovers. Four. 
Syracuse coming off a blowout win against Pitt. Set. Tough shot by Lewis. She did not miss from the floor against Pitt. Six for six. Ogumawale with her second layup miss. That one a little easier than the last. And Quinton Hillsman's going to call a timeout. We'll step aside as well. Six minutes in. Both identities for these two teams on display. Two-point game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Domino's. Order online and track your order. And Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Our show tonight operating out of the Dick Clark Studios in the Newhouse School of Public Communications. Legendary place here. Over 100 shows produced out of this control room. Every academic year, freelance production personnel and all the students. They're working on the uh, Dino Baber show with our buddy Matt Park, the fine radio voice of the Cuse. Awesome to see. Getting ready for the ACC Network launching in August. Speaking of launching, Miranda Drummond's buried a couple of threes. And Syracuse back on top. But China, you were in that Q huddle. What'd you hear? Yeah, Quentin Hillsman was not happy with his backcourt during that timeout, specifically Lewis, Monacahia, and Drummond. He told all three of them, listen, you have to trust me in this game and do what I'm telling you to do. There was a play that they didn't run the way he wanted it ran, so he wants them to be better at their organization and their execution. And a couple of bad possessions here, LC, because easy buckets for Notre Dame, including one off the fifth Syracuse turnover. A nice end-to-end -end play by Mabry. Yeah. Mabry strips and strips it and then goes with the Euro step to finish. It was a nice play. Mabry's been rock solid as of late, making her 100th career start tonight. Tough job trying to defend Lewis on that drive, though. A good take by the transfer from Ohio State. And our buddy Charlie Cream updating his bracketology. Notre Dame would fall to the two seed with a loss. Notre Dame's seeding is going to be interesting to track the next couple of weeks. Meanwhile, Syracuse trying to get into the top 16 potentially and host the first two rounds of the tournament as Young misses a three. Remember when they made their run to the Final Four in 16, they did host the first two rounds of the tournament. It's the only time Syracuse has ever hosted in the NCAA tournament. Stroutman putting the moves on Turner. That was a nice play. Syracuse, ever since that timeout, uh, has looked settled. They've looked settled offensively, and they've done a solid job on the defensive end. I'll tell you what I think Notre Dame needs to do. I, I'm not I, I'm not so sure why they're not getting the basketball to the paint once it transitions to the half court. And when, when you got an opportunity for Jackie Young or Marina Mabry or Enrique Gumbawale in transition, that's great. But I think they've missed Jess Shepard a couple times. Sure. And I, I think there's some opportunities for them to drive to get to the paint. There it is. Right okay. Cue, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's what you got to do against against that Syracuse zone. You can't rely on the three-point shot the entire game, or the roller coaster is going to be based on whether you're making or missing. And this is not a Notre Dame team, as we've already established, that makes a ton yep. from the outside over the course of the long season. They get a ton of transition points and a ton of paint points. Emily Engsler, the true freshman stud. Working on Shepard, nearly got that one to go. Ogumbawale on the run out. Pull up, pop. A foul on the floor call. Go against Manakahia. A nice job. Hesitation by Jackie Young. Perfect pass. And just Shepard is on the inside of Engsler, the defender, and is able to finish. Key moment here. The leader in assists in the country, Manakahia, has got to come out because she just picked up her second foul. I guess she's not going to come out. They're going to bring in Maeva Jaldi Tabdi, the freshman. They're going to leave Manakahia in with those two fouls. And now Jackie Young becomes the fifth starter for Notre Dame to score. Lewis back the other way and draws a Turner foul. Now, Quinton Hillsman is known for rotating, line changing at times defensively. But he's going to stick with Manakahia. I can understand that, too. You have confidence in your best play. Oh, it's, it's confidence. It's also trust. Trust. It's a great deal That's probably trust. the better word for Yeah, that. because, you know, you have to, you have to kind of cry uncle on certain situations. When you have those two fouls, you have to say, all right, if, if I'm beat, I've got to let him go, yeah. right? I can't take... 
too many chances. And certainly I think it's a little bit easier to be on the perimeter at times when you have two fouls because there's just not that close physical t contact that occurs uh, on the interior. Uh, but she'll just have to be careful. Jackie Young the rebound as Lewis split the pair. Well, they left Young open. Good screening by Turner. Jaldi Tabdi trying to post up. Lenakahi and the Australian taking it strong but missed the layup. Notre Dame can go two for one here. We'll set up for a good shot. Ogumawale a deep three. Her second of the first quarter. Irish have their largest lead at five. Not much of a difference, so Syracuse can hold for the final shot. Irish already have made three threes, as have the Orange. Lenakahia penetrating. Rotates to Stratmane for three. And that'll do it for the opening quarter at the Carrier Dome. Marina Mabry. Leading the way with seven points for Notre Dame. The Irish have the five-point advantage, their largest through one. Champ Week, March 8th through the 17th on the networks of ESPN. Remember that Notre Dame has the tie break over Louisville as those two teams sit tied atop the standings. But Miami has the tie break on both teams. They've beaten both Louisville and Notre Dame this year. NC State will face Miami, by the way, in the regular season finale on March the 3rd. That could be for seeding. And of course, Syracuse sitting in the five spot right now. Half game ahead of Florida State. In traffic, Jaldi Tabdi. Unable to corral it cleanly. 14 to shoot for Syracuse. Five turnovers in the opening quarter for Syracuse. Meanwhile, Notre Dame, eight assists, no turnovers on 10 buckets. That's well, a type of airtight first quarter you'd expect from an experienced team, right? Yeah. I mean, you start four seniors and a junior. Uh, they, they understand what it takes to win on the road. Michaela Vaughn checks into the game. And a good lift. A little good bit pressure. easier to get a look at the basket without Turner in there, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Yvonne at six foot three is the second leading shot blocker. She has 58 blocks fewer than Brianna Turner does this year. Nice pass. Working out of the post, Jess Shepard, you've talked about her passing. She finds Vaughn. Every time Notre Dame's got it into the paint, whether it's at the free throw line area, or by dribbling it, uh, they've gotten a quality look at the basket. And more times than not, they've scored. Uh, that has to be their mindset in the half court going against that zone. Monikahi out there with the two fouls. Lewis firing. Tadi Sissoku is in the game, true freshman. She and Jaldi Tabdi, teammates in Paris, France together. Mabry gets called for the push-off as Stratmane draws the foul. Well, Super Tuesday with a couple of good matchups. ACC and Big Ten. Duke without Zion Williamson getting set to take on 20th ranked Virginia Tech at 7 Eastern. Then at 9 Eastern, Wisconsin moved up in the rankings this week into the top 20. They'll get set to take on Indiana from Bloomington. 7 and 9 on ESPN and the ESPN app tomorrow night for Super Tuesday on your TV. This is a fun one here at the Carrier Dome. Duke and Syracuse without Williamson on Saturday night in front of a record crowd. Hoping for that tonight on the women's side. There's the freshman, Engsler. He's coming off a career-high 17 in the blowout win against Pitt. Highly touted freshman. By Jackie Young beating everybody down the floor. Missed one near the rim. Stays with the Irish. Well, Engsler's a player that has 
this exciting skill set on the offensive end of the floor. I mean, she can knock down the three-point shot. She's got the size that she took advantage of uh, with Agumba Wale defending her. Uh, Quentin Hillsman talked to us about her getting used to the pace of the game and the pace of how they want to play yep. uh, here, at, here at Syracuse defense and offense, and that's generally an adjustment for most freshmen at this level. China, I'd be curious about something. We were discussing pace earlier as well. Both of these teams in the top 40, similar paces. How have you seen the pace flow so far? It seems like the pace is really working for both teams. You know, I think what Syracuse tries to do is speed you up. And as Kara noted earlier, because Notre Dame has so many upperclassmen, they've been in these situations, they're experienced, they've handled that pressure well. Keep in mind that part of Syracuse playing style is thriving off of turnovers, and they haven't been able to do a lot of that versus Notre Dame so far. Yeah, Irish had not turned it over in the first quarter. Lewis called for a traveling violation. I think that was the right call. Joe Vazilli counting the third step. So when you talk about pressure, look, look, even though it's not a press, they pick you up here. Yeah. And so Jackie Young has to exert a little bit more energy before the ball crosses half court. Marina Mabry in the first quarter was a player that had to do that, and that type of thing can wear on you through the course of the game. Last touch by the Irish, Syracuse takes over. Mabry is gonna get a breather here for Notre Dame. That's seven in the first. She didn't wanna come out. No. Players never wanna come they out. They never do. No. Mabry's a pretty competitive one at that. Abby Prohasco has seen a lot more minutes in the second half of the year, especially if the defensive end is out there in that Notre Dame zone. Lewis stepping inside the arc, in and out. And here comes Ogumbawale off the rebound and into the push. Nothing there, and they'll back it out. Over the top, Young to Shepard in traffic, and a jump ball will keep it with the Irish. But a good defensive effort by Engsler. Yeah, I thought the, the timing of the pass from Ogumbawale to Young was a little bit late, and I thought the timing of the pass from Young to Shepard was a little bit late. Yeah. And when passes are late, that allows the help to get there, right? So I, I thought the timing of that pass being late made Jess Shepard get that uh, put back. But that time, that time, we're on time with the exactly. pass when we get the layup, right? Say, you, you, and, yeah. and you heard Muffet McGraw talk about it today with all of us. You're a beat late on it, just a beat late. Or you don't see it at just the right time. Maybe you try to force the pass in. That's what leads to turnovers. Turner's gonna come in and give Shepard a breather. Manakahi is gonna come back in for Syracuse as will Isis Young, former Florida Gator, who uh, made her national TV debut with uh, Jay Billis and Maria Taylor the other night. Shout out Maria back in the studio. And she's on the floor as well. Ogumbawale. Rebounded by Sissoku. Engsler into traffic and a blocking foul called on Vaughn. Oh, Maria, Maria's slacking tonight. CO's in the studio. So I, Isis and Jay were making fun of Maria's camera skills, and now, now she didn't show up today for studio. Now we get to hang out with Shanae, Rebecca, and, and Andy back in the studio, which I'm perfectly fine with. Was it DMP rest? I hope. I, th I think it's DMP. I don't so think it was coach's decision. I think it was, okay. it was a very, it's an Anthony Davis situation. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about Isis Young. Let's get let's get a look at what she was able to put together with our crew the other day. Young in the ice box, 94 feet edition with Jay Billis. So Jay, what's it like being in a dome today? It is great to be at the Carrier Dome. I uh, I'm a million years old, but actually Jim Bayheim actually recruited me to come to school here back when they played at Manly. So I never never got to play there. Right. But then you coached at Duke, and are you cheering for Duke tomorrow? You can't really I don't Duke. care who wins. I'm <laughs> so old, I don't care. All I want to see is a good game. You always see a good game in here. Okay, well, thanks for joining me in the Ice Fox today. I'm glad to be with you, but the camera person was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Maria, watching at home, strictly realizes that was just so we could see that final shot. Jackie Young putting Notre Dame up by double digits. 20 paint points already for the Irish out of their 34. They've averaged 59 paint points the last three games. 
That's better than their average of 50 per game on the year. A good ball movement up until that last pass by Engsler. Young to Mabry. They finish in transition. And Quinton Hillsman's going to call that timeout. Much unanimous number one this week again, Baylor. And Andy's right, Syracuse has turned the ball over on 30% of its possessions so far. Thanks to her hoop stats for that great nugget. Strout Manet. And the scoreless drought continues. Mabry. Around it out. Let's see if Syracuse can take advantage. Had a really solid season. 20 win campaign once again for the 10th straight year. Sosoku can't hit. Stratmane gets another chance. Boy, some good shots not going down. Little pocket pass, Mabry to Turner. Good second effort by Turner. See, I think especially with this cushion, Notre Dame can afford to be a little bit more choosy on the offensive end with what shots they take. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for a good early look at a three-point yeah. shot. But they, that look can also be had late in the clock. They can get that. Uh, this is what I like for early looks for them, pushing it, getting it to the paint, and utilizing the size advantage that they enjoy on the front line. And they do it in transition again off another Syracuse turnover. Syracuse is averaging nearly 20 turnovers a game this year. That's been a problem for them. And it has been so far tonight. Prohaska on the bump. Gets called for the foul. Freshman out of Ohio. The Chicago native, Kiera Lewis. Manakahi is going to come back in for Syracuse. Engsler will come in as well. Manakahi from Brisbane, Australia. Second year playing at Syracuse. Only ACC player on the Nancy Lieberman watch list for top point guard in the country. Well, unfortunately, with the foul trouble and just uh, how, how much they've struggled taking care of the basketball, we haven't gotten to see Tiana in, in all her glory right. yet. And she's... She's a tough competitor and has the ability to get into the paint uh, almost at will and find find those those hard windows to get the basketball through. Shepard in a lot of congestion kicks it out. Ogumbawale can't hit, but Turner with the offensive rebound. Notre Dame 11th in the country in rebound rate this year offensively, and they are crashing the glass here. It ends with a Turner too. Meanwhile, Syracuse has struggled this year on the defensive rebounding end of things. Not uncommon for teams that play a lot of zone. We told you earlier about the ACC Network. It is launching officially in August 2019. 15 universities, one network. ACCN.com to learn more. And of course, we'll open up on a Thursday night with Clemson and Georgia Tech. Wow. That's our opening game of the ACC football season on the ACC Network. So it's pretty good. That'll be defending pretty, pretty champions, good. Defending right? champs, absolutely. Jackie Young back in. Lewis at the line. Two free throws. Kiara Lewis, number eight, forty-two, Syracuse, twenty-five. Mabry coming off just four points. But did have a career-high tying 10 assists against Duke. Turner missed it. Quinton Hillsman out near midcourt to deliver the instructions to Lewis. Who lost it? 11 turnovers for Syracuse. Drummond punched that transition pass from Shepard. It'll stay with the Irish. 
It's kind of a clogged transition opportunity yeah. for Notre Dame. The spacing wasn't great, and that allowed Drummond to make that defensive play. It was a nice deflection by Syracuse, and you got two minutes if you're Syracuse to try and whittle this lead down, make it a little bit more manageable as you enter the second half. There's that free throw line area wow. again. I mean, I would love to know in that free throw line, when the ball has touched the free throw line area tonight, Adam, I mean, they got to be over 80% in terms of converting shots and converting makes when just the ball touches there. Not the shot coming yeah. from there, but the ball touches that area. Cooper misses a three. How often do we hear about it? Short corners and the logo in the foul line area. Those are the two soft spots against his own defense. Nice flash by Enrique. And then it, it, if you pass the ball quickly and on target, the help can't get there. Right. Mabry from the corner, missed the three. On a tiptoe the sideline, another Syracuse turnover as Cooper couldn't hold on. Well, Quentin Hillsman has to be frustrated because yeah. they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Now, a lot of these turnovers are poor decisions by Syracuse. Uh, some of them are, are solid Notre Dame defense, but a lot of the turnovers are them just not making solid passes. Good look from that foul line area there. If she gets that look and turns and faces, it looks like they're conceding that by the way they're playing her there. Absolutely she can take it. Nice move, Strout Manet. Riga Latvia native, the sophomore with her third bucket. Oh, good interception by Lewis. Stole the Shepherd pass. Who's spinning inside? Good take, but could not finish at the rim. Young, to Ogumba Wale. Good finish by Arike. And a good pass by Young in transition. Young's had some nice passes in this first half. The team leader in terms of average assists per game at four and a half. Mabry not far behind, and then Ogumba Wale around four as well. I think that Kumbawale's leading him in assist in ACC In ACC play, play yeah. she is. Lewis, final seconds into Turner. And Turner and Shepard got a lot of work done in that first half at both ends of the floor. Those two combined for 22, nearly outscoring the rest of the Syracuse bunch. Let's go over to LaChina Robinson with Muffet McGraw. Coach, your team shot the ball at just under 50% in that first half. You really had your way against the Syracuse zone. What was the key to your success there? I think going to the mid post and high post, it's really open on the ACC area. I'd like to do that a little bit more. I think we're taking a couple of quick shots. We need to get inside and get some more layups. You were also able to rack up a lot of points off of turnovers. What do you like about the way your defense played in the first half? Yeah, we're trying to mix it up man and zone, trying to keep them off balance a little bit depending on who they have in the game. But I think we're working pretty hard. Just got to get that one-on-one -on -one contain the ball down. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for trying. Impressive stuff for Muffet McGraw's team sitting on the one line right now. They're going to talk plenty of bracketology in the studio. Shanae Ogumike, Rebecca Lobo, and Andy Landers. Welcome back to Big Monday and the ACC on ESPN. 46-27 the lead for Notre Dame at the half. Seniors playing their potential final home game at the Carrier Dome. If Syracuse can host the first two rounds, they get a chance to play here. But they need a little bit of a resume bolster and they need to come back for that tonight. That being said, impressive stuff from Notre Dame at both ends of the floor and a lot of turnovers for Syracuse. Yeah, that, that, that's a challenge. You play against a team like Notre Dame offensively. You don't want to give them more yeah. chances to score, and that's exactly what Syracuse did in that first half. 12, count them, 12 turnovers, and Notre Dame getting 12 more shots at it because of the carelessness of Syracuse. That had to be a point of emphasis for Quentin Hillsman and his team at halftime. Just take care of the basketball better. Guys, let's not beat ourselves. Let's not put us in a disadvantaged position off of those turnovers because Notre Dame's flying back at us in transition. And if Syracuse can take care of the basketball, I believe they can get back in this one. Some of the key numbers of that opening half. Notre Dame, when they dominate the paint, they're really good more often than not. They did that in the first half. When Notre Dame runs in transition, they're pretty good. They did that in the first half as well. And Tiana Monica, uh, Monacahia, limited with foul trouble, did not score in the first half and turns it over promptly here. Get 
Mabry to Shepard. What a great pass. Really tough one. That's now 16 assists on 21 field goals for Notre Dame. High efficiency tonight. Ogumbawale back from Mabry. Two assists for Marina Mabry to start the half, and Ogumbawale is into double figures. And not the way you want to start if you're Syracuse. And let's give Notre Dame some credit sure. defensively, okay? Absolutely. Because this has been an issue for them in terms of their inconsistency on the defensive end all season long, and they have played very well on this end tonight. Finkley with the hook. Oh, Mabry didn't see Drummond from the backside. Good steal by Miranda. And a good feed to Drummond. That's four assists for Manakahia now. Going for Shepard like a volleyball touch pass to Turner. So Jess Shepard continues to impress as a passer. Finkley, tough post catch, couldn't get it to go. Bumbawale sets up Mabry for a three. Mabry nearly tipped it to herself, but Monacahia comes out with it. Mabry picks up her second, and we check in with Lachina. Well, guys, I caught up with Quentin Hillsman, and he did absolutely address his team's turnovers at the half. And what he said is we're not moving the ball enough. We've got to get Notre Dame's defense moving side to side. We're making one pass and throwing up the shot. He felt like they did a better job in the first quarter of really moving it around. I also asked him about his zone defense against the high post for Notre Dame. And he's most concerned about the high percentage dump to the low block. He said we've got to get them to make a pass out, a lower percentage outside shot from the high post instead of letting them get that high low layup. Got that a lot in the first half with China. And one of the things I think that may be a challenge for Syracuse is it's Turner that they're throwing it to. And I'll be honest, there are points on the backboard you can throw it to her that no other player on the floor can get to. Yeah. Even if the defense is, is in the correct position. She's just got that great athleticism. Stroutman, eh? And Kara, to your point, Quentin Hillsman said he wanted that bottom forward to pinch in on the high-low dump, but if they're not tall enough or athletic enough, it really doesn't matter if they're there or not. Yep, that's uh, that's what Turner can give you on that back line. And the other thing is it's just Shepard that's making those passes, and she's so pinpoint uh, with those passes from that area. There's Stroutman again with a look from the elbow. I mean, Lachina, you've talked about Jess Shepard passing more like a point guard yeah. than anything else. Yeah, I mean, Jess Shepard said that she's always been a pass-first type of player, and we talked to Muffin McGraw, who also agreed. She said she thinks she's a big point guard. Well, she actually played point guard all the way up until high school, so that was her mentality to get everyone involved. But, of course, you see her size. Eventually, she would end up moving to other positions, but in her mind, she still sees the floor and loves to get her teammates involved. Good passing leading to an Ogumbawale three there off a Turner assist. And a foul here against the Irish on Young. So it's a good time in the China. Look at this play that we just talked about. You talked about the forward sliding down. So they slide down the ball here, but now who's open? Turner sees it, and now it's Enrique Ogumbawale, okay? So checkmate, Irish, right? You understand that there's two players on there, and that's what makes them so difficult to defend, Adam, because they can read what's going on it's not robotic if you do one if you do one thing this way they're going to do it another way they have the ability to be flexible and adjust it was a nice heads up play by Turner on the catch to find her buddy Agumbawale for the three this is the only team in the country where they have five players averaging 13 or more as Drummond knocks down a three she's into double figures in fact Marquette and Notre Dame are the only two teams in the country that have all five starters tally over a thousand career points. And this is as talented of a starting five as there is in college hoops as Stroutman 
picks up the foul. Here is Turner to the free throw line, the aforementioned Texas native. Coming off 21 and 15 rebounds against Duke. Not too long from now, top of the hour, in fact, we'll take it to Lawrence and Allen Fieldhouse. Very important game near the top of the Big 12. Been a jam between Kansas State, Kansas. Baylor's had a great year. Can't forget about what Chris Beard and Texas Tech have done. Holly Rowe will be on the call, our buddy, with Bob and Fran, coming up over on ESPN at 9 Eastern. Turner's got 15 tonight. It's a 25-point Notre Dame lead. Cooper got a good look, but can't hit. Young to Ogumbawale, and a foul by Manakahia on the shooter. So three free throws for Ogumbawale. Nobody has shot or made more free throws in the ACC this year than Arike. Uh, transition, uh, Arike hunting that shot. And it's been a tough night. I mean, that's... And the official obviously had a closer look than we did in terms of being right there. I thought uh, maybe just on the post stack, yeah. post and, shot. And, and even if it's a touch on the hand, it's still a foul. Still a foul, yep. I mean, just the slightest touch can throw you off uh, as a shooter. And I think this is why coaches preach so much about being in position in transition defense because those closeouts often lead to either a foul or an open look. Mm -hmm. And the all-time leading Irish scorer, Ogumawale knocks down three free throws. What a remarkable accomplishment that is. I mean, you think about the the names and the players that have gone Absolutely. through this Notre Dame program. Foul on Turner takes us to a timeout. For Center Moore on car insurance. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. <laughs> Messing around here at the Carrier Dome. Part of a great crowd on hand. Irish in control, though. 62-34 to 34 on top of Syracuse. Syracuse has one more game against the ranked team before the ACC tournament begins. That'll be on Thursday in Tallahassee. Notre Dame's final game will come against Virginia before the ACC tournament in Greensboro begins. Both of these teams still trying to bolster their resumes. Notre Dame battling for a one seed. Syracuse trying to be a top 16 when the committee releases its rankings in three weeks. For the NCAA tournament, they'd love to host here at the Carrier Dome. Monacahia takes it away. Still scoreless tonight. And a foul called sending Lewis to the line. Young on the foul. Shanae, Rebecca, and Andy talked a little bit about it at the halftime break, giving you our updated seedings from Charlie Cream, our resident bracketologist. This is what the seedings look like. Albany has UConn as a one seed. Greensboro would have the number one overall seed in Baylor as it stands right now. A couple of stacked brackets. I'd be curious, does it matter? That's the discussion that they were having at halftime. Like for a team like UConn, does it matter where they're at if they're in, if they're a one or a two seed? They're probably going to end up in Albany, you'd think, if Shepard finds one. I think, it, yes. I, I think being a one or two does matter. Okay. Um, because just as you advance through the tournament, in theory, you're playing easier opponents each time. So you're playing a 16, you're playing the winner of an 8 and 9 instead of a 7 10, you're playing a 4 instead of a 3. And I'll tell you, some of those. It's hard to tell the difference between some of the twos and threes. Yeah. To me. Like some I of those threes year, could be potentially yeah. more dangerous than twos, depending on the matchup. Right. 
So, yes, to answer your question, it does matter. From a regional perspective, though, I, I think that the teams that, like, I think UConn would rather be in Albany. Of course. I think Oregon's going to rather be in Portland. And that's why I say, like, will it matter if Oregon's a one or a two? If they, Because they might end up in Portland either way. If, if, Albany, if UConn's a one or a two, they might end up in Albany either way. So it might end up, just might, end up being a moot point. Well, and when we had the NCAA reveal, everyone was upset about Baylor, right? Because they were saying Baylor and Greensboro, but not only that, you know, when you look at the other seeds, it seemed like Baylor being the number one overall had the toughest path. But what I think we have to realize is that there just isn't a great location for Baylor this year, right? Yeah. And so Greensboro may seem like a stretch, but what's more important is who that two seed is in that region. That's the most important conversation, I think, as it pertains to Baylor. That's a yeah, good call. I yep. agree, and if Baylor wins out, uh, which they're playing Texas, I think, right Texas now. Texas tonight, yep. If they win out and then obviously win the Big 12 tournament, I think they should be protected as the overall number one seed and have the easiest path to Tampa. That, that That's the way the tournament should go. They should have the lowest Yes. I, I, I'm trying to say it the right way. Yeah, the lowest the two worst seed. number two seed, Just I guess. The lowest, like the two, lowest seed. two seed, yeah, yeah, yeah. for lack, well, lack of a better term. They it, should have that. And I think the conversation that we keep having is what do we think is more important, the S curve or the G curve? Or the G curve. The, G, the, right. the, the seeding so curve or the it, geographic right. curve? Is yeah. it more important geographic or, Kara, I don't know what you think, but is the S more important or? I don't. I think we make it harder than it is sometimes, at least on the one to two lines, LaChina. That's just a great take. What a take by Tiana. I, I think we make it hard. I think there's a way, and it's hard because we don't have the full set of, of data right now. But I think there's a way to maybe not send certain teams to their geographical cl closest location, but maybe the second closest location. And so we're, we're giving, paying homage to the G curve. But ultimately, if you're saying what I think is more important, I think the S is more important yeah. while paying homage to the G. So I think there's a way to keep Oregon in Portland. I think there's a way to keep UConn in Albany and not give Baylor the most stacked region in Greensboro. Yeah, there's got to be a happy medium here somewhere for that. If we're not going to go straight seating, which I understand there's limitations to how it's going to go as an offensive foul is called on Turner. And this is the other side of it, Chicago and Portland, and these two regions would match up in the Final Four in a semifinal, the winners of these two regions. Louisville-Notre Dame, like, you heard Rebecca talk about it, too, in the studio. This is really important. If you are taking geography into consideration, if you are taking travel into consideration, you want to be in the easiest possible pod, that Chicago pod is where both Notre Dame and Louisville want to be. After a scoreless night, Manakahia with six quick ones. And Ogumbawale dribbled it off of her foot. Drummond was defending up the floor. Some life from Syracuse. surge here yes. from Syracuse. 8 0 run. Been waiting. A lot of folks in this building have. A lot of orange tonight. Good feed, Jaldi Tabdi, but could not finish, and then Stroutmanay commits the foul. Well, there's a long way to go before we figure all that out. Like you said, we don't have the full data, and a lot of important data is coming our way, considering what might happen in the Pac-12 championship or the tournament with teams like Oregon, Stanford, Oregon State. What's going to happen to the ACC? Will it be Notre Dame, Louisville? Will Miami make it all the way after two wins against those two teams this year. Plenty to decide and plenty to compute with every piece of data that's still bound to come in. Jump ball keeps it here. I mean, teams have crazy stretches as well. We just saw Oregon last week, the loss to Oregon State, blew a 22-point lead against UCLA, granted without Rookie Heber this week, but two tough losses there. Nice play by Drummond. Manakahia takes it all the way in. And a timeout from Muffet McGraw. Syracuse on the push, a 10-0 run to bring the crowd to its feet at the Dome.
Tiana Manakahia is fueling this run by Syracuse, but her journey from Australia to Syracuse has been a long one. Two years after graduation from high school, she decided to give junior college a try in the United States, so she went to Hutchinson Community College. She was not eligible to play because of some issues with the team she played with in Australia, so she just sat for two years at Community College. She did run track, but her coaches offered to help her get to a Division I school. She considered UMass, Virginia Tech, Oklahoma State, but ended up at Syracuse, where she would finally touch the court after a whole two years off. Now, keep in mind, because of this long journey, guys, she's actually going to be 24 years old in April, and she still has another year of eligibility left, but she is also eligible to enter the WNBA draft, something she said she's still thinking about. Incredible story. We talked with Quentin Hillsman earlier before the game, and he talked about the first time he saw her play at the U-17 uh, World Championships, and she was playing for the Australian team, and he was an assistant coach for the Netherlands team, and he was talking about, lamenting about how she was the player that nobody in the tournament could guard. Yeah. And so when he got the opportunity to bring her into the fold here at Syracuse, he took advantage, and she has been a lifesaver for this team at the point guard position. After losing Alexis Peterson, they need somebody, they needed somebody to fully take the reins of this team, and she has done that. Well, it has been a struggle tonight for Syracuse offensively for good chunks of this game. This is an offense that has identity. They like to play with pace. It's a team with identity. Shepard, though, muscling inside against the freshman, Jaldi Tabdi. And we'll have a chance at a three-point play. The take by Shepard, some of that athleticism. Yeah, it was. <laughs> if this was a men's college basketball game, that would have been a flex. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? Everyone's got to show how, show, show how strong they are, you know. Well, Shepard's worked really, really hard. Fourth consecutive double-double that she's working with right now. Dropped the, about 30 plus pounds and a ton of body fat percentage. I know it's a story that's been told a couple times this year, but I mean, it bears repeating considering how hard she worked to get to this level of athlete that Muffin McGraw is so happy to have on that on that crew right now. Monikahi, a nice take on her end. Good third quarter for her. A 10 in the quarter alone. So Syracuse. Get back to around that 20-point deficit mark. Remember, this is a 30-point game. It was 64-44 earlier this quarter. Shot clock winding down. Vaughn forced it up, but way about the basket attempt. Shot uh, clock violation. That's an Agumboale turnover because two went to her off of that ball screen. She's got to get the ball out of her hands quicker. I think she was locked and loaded in her mind to shoot the basketball, but when two come to you with that much time left, this is what Muffin McGraw, I think, is telling her right now. Get the ball out of your hands. Look at the second half turnovers. Nine of them already for Notre Dame. And it's back to that conversation that you had with Muffet earlier today. Just how do these turnovers kind of come about? And it's different things for different players, but sure. oftentimes it is just that little beat. You're a little later. You don't get rid of it when you know the double team is coming. Just little things like that. The timing's off. Well, there's so many decisions, Adam, that you have to make in the course of the game. And I think sometimes maybe people that haven't played the game, certainly at, at this high a level, uh, might not understand all of the all of the information the that you're processing, that. right? I mean, think about that last play with Arike Agumboale, and she comes off the screen. Think of how many questions are going through her mind in, in a two to three second period. Are there is there one player on me? Is there two players on me? Did they switch? Did they not switch? Is my rolling player is weak side coming over to help? Where's the open person? Do I need to secure the basketball as, as I back up dribble because they're coming at me and now they're trapping me? There's so many things that happen, and all that has to be processed. And sometimes you mess up. Yeah, I mean, right? I mean, sometimes you mess up and you make a mistake. And um, as a as a player, and then certainly as a coaching staff, um, you're you're trying to, to put yeah. them in situations where you know they they make fewer mistakes. But that's always going to be a part of the game of basketball is making mistakes. Final seconds, and Mabry is bumped. Foul called on Drummond. There's Mabry. That could have been an offensive foul yeah. there, and yeah. they ended up pulling Drummond on that reach. Yeah. I think the crowd saw that too. They're reacting to that. 
Mabry to the line. That, Bonus. You know, that's a little Mabry tendency when you bring pressure to her. If you watch film oh, yes. on Mabry, she'll, she'll stick out that chicken wing and, and push off a little bit to try and clear you. Sometimes she gets caught for it. She got sure. caught for it earlier in the game. Yep. Uh, but that's, that's something that she does tend to do. Final seconds of the third. Monacahia, who's had the big third quarter, leave that one short. And a 22-point advantage for the Irish. Number four team in the country in control, the quarter four. Sixty-nine forty-seven Notre Dame on top as we head to the fourth quarter. Impressive balance again for the Irish. Jackie Young's the only starter not in double figures, but she's racked up the assist night, and that's been a solid combo for the rest of that starting lineup who've combined for 59 tonight. No shock, the starting five of the Irish have been impressive. They've been one of the best starting five in the country all year. Oh, well, that's the four seniors as well. Okay, uh, that's the experience that they have. Monacahia had double digits in the third quarter. At one point, it was a 30-point game. Back down to 20 here after the Jaldi Tabdi bucket. Adam Amin, Carol Lawson, LaChina Robinson, our great crew here at the Carrier Dome. Turner puts it in. On the precipice of the end of the regular season, getting set for the postseason. These two teams will be in Greensboro in a couple of weeks for the ACC tournament. Syracuse battling for a potential double buy as a top four seed, and of course, still hoping to bolster their resume enough to be in consideration as a host for the first two rounds of the tournament. That was deflected, still four to shoot. Engsler, tough shot. Well, when we came back, you saw everybody cheering. How about this? We'd love to get a name from uh, whoever knocked up this halftime shot. Sign her up. Give it, put, put give her, her, give her a jersey. Yes. Hey, they could use some three-point shooting tonight. <laughs> How about that? That's great. Half-court shot. Well, we spoke with uh, our old ESPN colleague and current AD of Syracuse, John Wildhack. Big weekend, obviously, for the Orange. Offensive rebound, Shaldi Tabdi. Lewis on the third chance puts it in. And back to a 20-point game. There is a timeout. We said, fun weekend here at the Carrier Dome with the men's and women's teams bringing in big crowds. We'll step aside. former ACC player at Virginia. LaChina talked about the analytics for Syracuse at the top. What are the goals for this team? It's a system predicated on a lot of different things, but LaChina, what do you feel about tonight so far? Yeah, things really not going too well for the Qs, and I have to mention that we're looking at some of the margins that they measure, the turnovers, offensive rebounds, and three-point field goals made. There are also several other categories in terms of, for example, free throws made there you on the left of your screen you see assistant coach Vaughn Reed who um, actually came up with this whole analytics identity for Syracuse and Quinn Hilton said it came at a time where he needed to find something for his team they hang their hat on and he came in with a whole notebook of information and numbers and Quentin said I, I need to get this down to a one pager so now that's <laughs> what they have they have that 20 plus identity and they try to stick to it and guys as you can imagine it's hard for a team to prepare for Syracuse especially like in the NCAA tournament for example which is why they may have had the success they did getting to the national championship because their style is so different and you're constantly guarding the three-point line. They're going to play against that zone for the entire game. And they're just so good in those areas that we showed earlier on the screen that they can be a problem if you if you meet them and don't have enough time to prepare. And Von Reed, he's written a lot of pages. Guys published six books. 
uh, part of a series called the Basketball Encyclopedia. Served in the United States Army in the late 80s and early 90s. Vaughn is one of the most interesting people in all of college basketball, as Jaldi Tabdi puts it in. And nearly a steal by Lewis. And it was last touch by Notre Dame. And they're going to switch it now. There is Vaughn Reed. Been in WNBA teams on their coaching staffs. Phoenix, I think Orlando as well at one point. A lot of experience. A lot of experience. Again, one of the most well-rounded coaches, I think, in college hoops right now. Milwaukee native, much like Notre Dame's Enrique Ogumbawala. Nice pass. Jackie Young to Jess Shepard. That is nine assists for Jackie Young tonight. Or the Irish second in the country in assist, or uh, beg your pardon, fifth in the country in assists per game. Wanakahia with a nice probe. Galdi Tabdi on the second effort, taken away by Turner, but she stepped up. Stroutmane will come in. Got a chance to see her sister last year. She's now a senior, Paula at Quinnipiac, averaging nine points a game again. Very consistent in her four-year Quinnipiac career. We had uh, Quinnipiac last year. Against Miami yes. in a fantastic first-round game last year. How about the Hurricanes, too? Give a lot of credit to Katie Meyer. I mean, they've, they've proven... I think when they beat Notre Dame, some teams are like, oh, I don't know how good of a loss that is. They've clearly established that they are a legit team the last three, four weeks. Not only are they a legit team, I think they're a threat to win the ACC tournament. Sure. I mean, we talk so much about Notre Dame and Louisville, and rightfully so. Rightfully so. Because they are terrific teams. They are teams that have registered as good a wins as you can find in the country. But you look at Miami, and you could make a case they're playing better than any team in the ACC sure. right now. Both Miami and NC State are 11-3, and, and they will meet in the regular season finale. Oh, the Mawale missed it. Young was there for the putback. Louisville still has NC State this week. That's a big game coming up on Thursday. While Notre Dame has Virginia left as Drummond buries her fourth three of the night. Young being hassled by Monica here. Feeds Mabry, though, and finds a tenth assist on the night. She worked for that one. Yeah. I mean, got the ball with 26 seconds left on the shot clock, had to navigate with the pressure to get it over, over the timeline, and then finds Mabry for the open three. Nice feed, Monica here to Cooper. But Ogumbawale snares the rebound. Notre Dame has the tie break against Louisville with that win this year. Miami has the tie break on both Notre Dame and Louisville with wins this year. A reminder that after K-State and Kansas, Sports Center will tell you about James Harden's scoring streak compared to Wilt Chamberlain. Still a long way to go to catch Wilt's 65 straight with 30, but Michael Wilbon will talk about it. The impact of Big Monday on the Big 12 tournament chances and Sources are saying that Bryce Harper is signing a deal well in excess of $300 million with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Tough for my girl from D.C. right yes. now. That's Sports Center tonight That's on right. ESPN. We still have Juan Soto. One of the best, if not the best young player outside of uh, Ronald Acuna in the National League. So I wouldn't be too worried. But, uh, I don't man, know the who East, the other guy is, man, the, but I know who Juan Soto is. Very good. <laughs> I can tell you Ronald Acuna is very good. The Braves are very good. The NL East is going to be very fun this year. <laughs> Mets made some free agent signings. that might make them a little better. I know that's going to make some Syracuse fans happy. Young putting the moves on Lewis for the N1. God, it feels like every night Jackie Young may not do a whole lot, and then you look at the stat sheet, and she has stuffed it. Great shot. Finishing through the contact. Yep. Sure. 
Yeah, Adam, we were talking to Muffin McGraw about that earlier. She said sometimes we will finish a game and say, oh, my God, Jackie was awful. And then we look <laughs> at the box score and she's got a double-double. She just quietly gets it done. But Muffin was saying that really we just have such high expectations of her. When you see her have a night like this where she made it look so easy, you understand. I mean, she's got a pro-ready body. She's working on that outside shot. We saw her really testing the three. That's where they're trying to grow her as well. But she's got so many dimensions to her game so many facets I just really think her upside is amazing Kara I agree I mean she's somebody that by virtue of not having a true point guard on the roster the last two years I think has been forced to improve her ball handling her decision making her passing and you know the the thing I think that leaves you a little wanting with her game right now is I think she could be a dominant scorer every night because of her frame, because yep. of her scoring ability, but I think she defers a little bit right now uh, to, to the other players on the team. That's not a terrible thing, but I think it's something that next year she's going to have to embrace that yep. for Notre Dame in her senior campaign because she won't have the services of the four other starters. Yep. The, all four players with Young on the floor are out of here after this year. Jackie Young is eligible to go to the WNBA ne next season if she decided to do so as an age-eligible junior. But she's had a good night tonight. Timeout called here. We'll be back in 30 seconds to wrap it up from the Carrier Dome. You guys were talking about Jackie Young and just all the skill set that she's able to display over the course of a game. I, I think her ability in transition, she can rebound and run. They have multiple players that can do that. And then in the half court, and certainly against pressure, I think she is their best ball handler against pressure. And so they, they do put the ball in their in her hands, uh, usually against that, and because they trust her. And you look at her numbers. I mean, versus top 25 teams, she elevates. I mean, that's what those numbers say. And uh, you, you have to appreciate that, uh, her ability to do that against the top teams. You know, LaChina, the three of us were having a conversation earlier today just about how the committee and Charlie Cream wrote about this today. How is the committee going to evaluate teams like Oregon and – NC State and Notre Dame when they were missing high-level key players. Now, I get NC State was a season-ending injury to one of their best players, but Jackie Young didn't play against North Carolina. Ruthie Hebert's been out the last game and a half. How do you think a committee evaluates that and looks at that? Yeah, and I think one of the keys to that, Adam, is is it fair to drop a team because they were missing a player. Is it fair to that team? But also, is it fair to their opponent? I mean, if Notre Dame ends up being, and I'm just using this hypothetically, the fourth two seed, right? And part of that is because of the way they evaluated that loss to UNC. That's not fair, right? If for the one seed, that ends up with Notre Dame as a result of the way that injury is perceived by the committee. And so it's a tough call to make because it's, it's still a loss. It's still a win for your opponent. But we see tonight how important Jackie Young is to, to Notre Dame and I think had a lot to do with them losing to North Carolina. Sure. Offensive foul there on Enrique. We hear about it, uh, and I've discussed it more so in college football the last couple of years because now there's a committee and now there's an evaluation process. Yeah, we they, hear co about they I, copy us. We hear eye test so much mm -hmm. in college football, and I don't feel like I hear it as much in basketball. Maybe that has to do with the bigger sample size of numbers that we can look at, but I feel like eye test-wise, I'm sure you'd be hard-pressed to find five better teams in terms of talent than Notre Dame or five better teams than... Louisville or whatever, like the teams that we look at that are being evaluated by the committee for these things that we're talking about, injuries and the like. Well, we use eye test. We've used that for a, a long time, that term. Um, you know, I think college football has copied a lot of the They have. No, no, they ha absolutely yes. have. As Oklahoma um, Wally scores. But uh, I, I think that does factor in. Uh, I, I it, it's an interesting question. It's a valid question. Yep. How do you evaluate Oregon with one loss on their schedule with a healthy Ruthie Heber. Uh, because she got hurt early in that game. Second that quarter we did, of that game. Uh, nice against season. Oregon State. And then uh, did not play in their loss to UCLA. So do you evaluate them as a one-loss team or one-and-a-half loss? Like, how, how much do you weight yeah, those yeah. games, right? Exactly. Is it one-and-a-half yeah. losses? Is it, you know, one-and-three-quarters losses? Is it, two, is it worth two, two losses? Uh, what does that look like? And I think you could say the same thing for Notre Dame. Um, and, and that, to me, is going to be fascinating because um, I, I don't know if it's even 
you know, whether they're on the one or two line. I think it's where they are on the one line. Yeah. Like, if Notre Dame wins out, why wouldn't they be the number two, number one seed? I agree. If you're factoring in the Jackie Young, the Jackie Young um, loss, so so that yeah, at full right. strength they're a two loss team through a three right. as a full strength team in the a top conference team. in the country. Exactly. Yes. With the best strength, remember Notre Dame has the best strength of schedule in the country. Playing in the ACC has a lot to do with that. Look at Syracuse; they're number eight. Like yeah. this is the best league. Yeah. This league and the SEC have eight bids as of right now, according to Charlie Cream. But the gauntlet of this schedule has been insane. Yeah, I mean, look, Notre Dame has the number one RPI. They have the number one strength of schedule. And we talked about uh, the loss that they had without one of their top players. So eight wins versus the RPI top 25. I mean, they, they have a one seed look to yes, their resume it, it, and, I, and I was, the eye test. I was going to yes. say the eye test, they yes. pass it as well. So that'll that'll be interesting because they're... Right, you know, if they're hovering at that five-four cut line to be a one seed, again, maybe it won't matter depending on the region you end up in. But matchups matter. Every coach knows matchups in the NC tournament matter maybe more than where you are. Lanikahi on the foul. The defending champions. I, I just want to say this. We, we talked about it earlier. You know, I love going to watch Notre Dame shoot around. It's it's one of my favorite shoot arounds that that we get a chance to go to. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm I'm a part of Mensa International <laughs> when I sit there because of uh, how much basketball <laughs> intelligence is on the floor. Yeah. I'm I'm able to be a part of Mensa International for like an hour, <laughs> and I'm very grateful uh, with all the. The knowledge that uh, sits over there on that bench, and it starts certainly with Muffin McGraw and the program that she's built, and it's really an amazing um, job that she's done. Second national championship of her career yep. last season, and uh, her coaching staff is as good as it gets. Neil Ivy and Carol Owens, Beth Cunningham, who by the way, Arike Ogumbawale passed on the scoring list earlier this season. She's now number three behind Skylar Diggins Smith and Arike. Danielle Cosgrove is on the floor, as is Daniel Patterson, Maureen Butler, Michaela Vaughn, and Abby Prohaska. Syracuse still with some of its main rotation players on what is a very deep team. And still fighting right down to the end of it. Lanakahia for three. Tapped out to the orange. There's Carroll on the left, Niel on the right. 19th year for Carroll, 12th year for Niel. And Beth has been part of the program for a long time as a player and as a coach. <laughs> 63-year-old Hall of Famer, National Coach of the Year last year. What does the future hold for Notre Dame this time around? What will happen to Syracuse? Will they be hosting here at the Carrier Dome, or is that the last shot of the season in this building for the women? We'll find out as we go, but what we found out tonight, Notre Dame stays squarely on the one line, and Muffin McGraw moves to 33-2 and all-time against Notre Dame. 990 program wins. Quinton Hillsman, 0-14 lifetime against the Irish now. Solid win. Yep. I mean, uh, they came out uh, focused and really put, I thought, put the game away in the second quarter yeah. in terms of the tone that they set, f forcing the turnovers from Syracuse, and then how they were dominant uh, in the paint. It was a, a, a good performance as Notre Dame tries to spur themselves to another ACC regular season championship. All five starters for Muffet McGraw landed in double figures tonight. Jackie Young had a double-double with 12 assists as well, and Muffet is with LaChina. Well, Coach, Syracuse made a run, but your team dominated for most of this game. What stood out to you most about your team's performance in this one? You know, I thought we were able to go inside and really, really dominate inside. I thought Bree played really well. Um, we still have a lot of work to do. You know, I, I think we're getting better defensively, but we, we've got plenty we can work on. 
We talked earlier at Shoot Around about Jackie Young and how she can just quietly take over a game. I think tonight she has 10 points, 8 rebounds, and a career-high 12 assists. What do you see as she continues to uh, mature in her game? I, I keep thinking she can play better. She can do better. Um, you know, she's really she came out aggressive, I thought, looked to score a little bit more. I was really happy with the way she handled the ball. Um, doing a great job at both ends. We had to put her at the point to take care, take care of the pressure on the backcourt, and she did a great job. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, LaTanya. A win for the Irish. They're 26th of the season. One more ACC game left. They're 13-3 at the top of the conference. Oklahoma and Iowa State coming up for LaChina Robinson, Carol Lawson, and our great crew. Adam Amin sings so long. A lot of Notre Dame fans, part of the biggest crowd at the Carrier Dome this year, 7,568. Sinead?